process of photosynthesis converts light energy from the sun into chemical energy. Carbon, in the form of carbon dioxide that cells cannot use, is converted into sugars, which cells can use. The sugar produced by photosynthesis can be used to make other biological molecules. In the process, photosynthesis also breaks down water to produce molecular oxygen. In fact, all of the oxygen in the air you breathe was produced originally by photosynthesis. Respiration uses the sugars produced by photosynthesis to derive useful energy for cells in the form of ATP. This process uses oxygen and produces carbon dioxide as a byproduct. So, when we burn sugars by respiration, we're using oxygen and making carbon dioxide. Cellular respiration, like any process that involves energy transformation, is inefficient. Energy is lost as heat. Photosynthesis can be broken down into two sets of reactions, the light-dependent reactions and the light-independent reactions. The light-dependent reactions take place in the thylakoid membranes and use light to produce energy. The light-independent reactions, or dark reactions, take place in the stroma and use energy derived from the light reactions to convert CO2 to glucose. The light reactions are fueled by energy from the sun. The energy is harvested by light-absorbing complexes in the thylakoid membranes and used to make ATP from ADP and NADPH from NADP+. In the process, water is split to yield oxygen. The ATP and NADPH are used by the dark reactions to take carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and reduce it to the level of a sugar through a cyclic set of reactions called the Calvin-Benson cycle. These are eventually converted to glucose and other important biological molecules. Photosynthesis is a continuous process, but we will follow the light reactions beginning with a photon of light being absorbed by photosystem 2. Absorption of the photon adds energy to the electrons in the photosystem. The excited electrons are ejected from the reaction center and picked up by the first electron carrier in an electron transport chain. As the electrons move down the electron transport chain, phosphorylation of ATP is initiated. We will explore the mechanism in a later section. Meanwhile, another photon of light hits photosystem 1 and excites electrons. These electrons are also ejected from the reaction center and picked up by carriers of another electron transport chain. The electrons lost from photosystem 1 are replaced by the electrons in the electron transport chain originally from photosystem 2. The electrons ejected from photosystem 1 move down their electron transport chain to eventually combine with NADP plus and a proton to make NADPH. What about the electrons lost from photosystem 2? They're replaced by splitting water. In the process, two electrons are removed and oxygen and protons are produced. The splitting of water is the source of the oxygen produced by photosynthesis. The ATP and NADPH produced by the light reactions will be used by the dark reactions to make sugars from carbon dioxide. In the following animation, we will explore the chemiosmotic synthesis of ATP. The mechanism shown is the same for both photosynthesis and respiration. The essential nature of this system is the pumping of protons across a membrane while electrons move down an electron transport chain. The proton gradient thus established drives the synthesis of ATP when the protons move back through a hydrogen ion channel coupled to an ATP synthesizing enzyme. As the electrons move down the chain, protons are pumped across the membrane. The protons accumulate and fill the interior of the thylakoid. The accumulated protons represent a form of potential energy. The energy, if captured, can be used to drive the endergonic synthesis of ATP. The energy is captured by taking advantage of the concentration and electrical gradient that is produced by the accumulating protons. The protons diffuse out of the thylakoid through a hydrogen ion channel that spans the membrane and is associated with an ATP synthesizing enzyme. This enzyme uses the energy of the proton gradient to drive the synthesis of ATP from ADP and phosphate. 
The first step in the Calvin-Benson cycle is called carbon fixation. The process is called carbon fixation because the carbon in carbon dioxide is not normally usable by living systems. The end product of carbon fixation is fixed or usable carbon. Carbon fixation begins with the reaction of ribulose bisphosphate, RUBP, and carbon dioxide, CO2. The product of the initial reaction is an unstable 6-carbon compound that is hydrolyzed by water to yield phosphoglyceraldehyde, PGA. If we start with 6-carbon dioxide molecules that react with 6-RUBP molecules to produce 12 PGA molecules, we will eventually be able to make one glucose molecule. This seems wasteful, but we also need to regenerate RUBP to start over. Our 12 PGA molecules undergo a series of reactions that include the use of 12 ATP molecules and 12 NADPH molecules that came from the light reactions. These reactions result in the formation of 12 molecules of glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate, G3P. At this point, we have a total of 36 carbon atoms. We started with 30 carbon atoms from 6 5-carbon RUBP molecules. So we can take two G3P molecules and make one molecule of the 6-carbon sugar glucose and still get back to the 6 5-carbon RUBP molecules we started with. If we continue cycling these reactions, every six carbon dioxide molecules that we fix will result in one molecule of the 6-carbon sugar glucose. G3P can also be used as a starting point to make other organic molecules, such as amino acids. All of this allows plants to turn carbon in the form of carbon dioxide gas into carbon in the form of sugar molecules that we all can use.